I cannot believe the timeline that we live in right now. Like, it's absolutely absurd. This last year, literally within a year, we got every single Mario RPG we could have possibly wanted on Nintendo Switch. I still can't believe I'm able to talk about this right now. That's how unreal it is to me. That we have four Mario RPGs that are technically all currently active as of right now. How did we get here? How is this possible? The journey to get here seemed impossible, but we made it. Mario RPGs are more alive than ever because yesterday Nintendo just announced Mario & Luigi Brothership. I, I want to call it Brotherhood because it just it comes off the tongue better, but I, I get the pun. Brothership. Reviving Mario & Luigi. There's so much to talk about. There's so much to uncover here. How did this happen? Well, let's back it up for a second. The Nintendo Switch originally did not have any of the Mario RPGs that we were used to. In fact, the only Mario RPG that was active during this time was Mario & Luigi, but on the 3DS. Yeah, they were remaking old Mario & Luigi games from the Game Boy Advance and the DS and just putting them on 3DS with Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story. And obviously, we know how those went. A lot of people did not buy them, and a lot of people actually felt like they were worse versions or they looked worse than the originals, which I still don't get. I, I thought they were fine. But yes, this led to very poor sales, which then in turn led to Alpha Dream, the developers going bankrupt. Superstar Saga's remake came out in 2017, and Bowser's Inside Story remake came out in 2019. But like I said, both of these were still somehow on the 3DS, and ultimately it led to the downfall of the series, and it eventually just kind of wiped out. We're talking about Nintendo Switch, a home console this time around, and what RPG did we get for the Nintendo Switch? Well, none of the Mario RPGs that we're used to. We got a brand new one that actually collabed with Ubisoft's Rabbids for Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. This new style of RPG surprised everybody, not just because the Rabbids were in it, and not just because Mario and his characters had guns. No, it was because it was a new style of XCOM tactical strategy RPG. It was a new grid pace RPG that completely changed up what we knew about Mario RPGs. It was so different and wacky and weird, but it was also also executed perfectly well. As fun and as cool as this game was, we couldn't help but shake the fact that this still wasn't the RPG that we were looking for. You know, it was a lot of fun and we did love the series, but we wanted some of the classics back as well. The RPGs that we grew up loving, Super Nintendo, the Game Boy Advance, the DS, and even the GameCube. 2020 rolls around and in the middle of a virus taking over the world, Nintendo just pretty much drops Paper Mario the Origami King and says it's coming out in two months, which was crazy. Now at the time, Paper Mario fans have had it rough. Sticker Star and Color Splash were the opposite of what Paper Mario fans have been wanting for so long, and it seemed like Nintendo was forever stuck in their ways of this new era of Paper Mario, full of toads and uninspired characters and NPCs, and it looked like Origami King was still taking a page out of those books, but at the same time trying to be slightly different. We still didn't have a basic battle system, it was some type of weird gimmick of moving around the ring, which I actually still enjoyed, uh, but yeah, the locations were pretty much uninspired, no partner characters, no original NPC characters, and although a really fun Paper Mario game, still not the overall experience that Paper Mario fans were hoping for. So it looked like Mario RPGs were in a very weird spot, with Mario and Luigi pretty much dead, and who knows what happened to Mario RPGs since the Super Entertainment System, so what's left? That's Paper Mario, and right now, Paper Mario was just not sitting in a good spot either. So right now, it was just Mario Rabbids really running everything. Just two years later, we get yet again another Mario Rabbids game, which a lot of people were excited for, myself included. And it actually kind of changed the formula up a little bit, changing the grid-based combat to more of an open exploration style of combat. And it still kind of played the same way, but just kind of worked exactly like it was supposed to, a sequel to the first game, now adding even more characters, like Rabbid Rosalina. This game was a lot of fun, but did just feel like more Mario Rabbids to me, and I could not help but shake the feeling that we still were not receiving the Mario RPGs that we were really missing, and it still just kind of felt empty on Nintendo Switch. Like, the fact that Mario Rabbids was the new Mario RPG was kind of scary to me, and I was really hoping we could still return back to some of the classic series that we used to love, and I was holding out as much as I possibly could. At the end of last year is when this whole thing began, is when we received a game that we were not even expecting. Yes, Mario RPG. 
Super Mario RPG from the Super Nintendo Entertainment System was getting a full-fledged remake. And this wasn't no sloppy kind of port to Switch. This was a from the ground up remake with new cutscenes, added boss battles, and tons of fun new additional content. This game was the definitive version of Mario RPG, and it still kept its basic premise, being the most basic of the Mario RPGs, but still super impactful in what made Mario RPGs what they were in the early 2000s. The fact that an original character, story-driven RPG like this actually returned kind of gave me hope from Nintendo. I said, hold on, wait a second, maybe Nintendo's willing to give us some of those classic stories and unique characters and worlds again. And if that's the case, maybe this could bleed into other series too, like Paper Mario and maybe even Mario and Luigi could make a return in the right way. Shortly after the release of this game, Nintendo was sending out surveys, actually asking about how fans enjoyed content like this, and did they want to see more from Paper Mario, and more like this from Mario and Luigi. And then we really were getting our hopes up that maybe some something big was getting ready to happen, and of course, it did. Right after Mario RPG, Nintendo announced the impossible. They did the impossible, and released Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake on Nintendo Switch this year in 2024. I never would have imagined in my wildest dreams I would have ever seen this game again. It seemed like Nintendo was completely moving away from what made Paper Mario so much fun for us as kids growing up and try to change the formula a little too much. And now, they finally did the thing that fans have been asking for. If you can't figure out what made Paper Mario so great in the first place, then go back and revisit it to find out what made it so great, you know? Just go back and remake the greatest of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, and they did it. And not only did they remake it right, they remade it pretty much perfectly, adding some small quality of life improvements and even adding some additional boss fights and content, this game was everything that Paper Mario fans could have possibly asked for. This was a proof in the pudding that Nintendo was willing to finally go back to what made Paper Mario so great. And they even sent out multiple surveys after the release of the game talking about the characters, the unique story, the partner, and so clearly Nintendo is understanding what it is that fans want. And the fact that this wasn't just slapped onto the Nintendo Switch, this was actually remade with care from the ground up, so clearly it seems like the team over at Nintendo and the Paper Mario team itself is willing to finally move forward and make Paper Mario games that actually feel like Paper Mario games. Harkening back to 64 and the Thousand Year Door, and this was the best news that Paper Mario fans could have ever asked for. Even with these, there's still one series that fans were a little sad about, and that's Mario and Luigi. Everything seemed to be making a return, but we were still missing one major franchise, which was the Mario and Luigi series, which actually hasn't had a game in over nine years. That last game that we did receive was Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, and for a lot of people, was the sticker star of the series, where it literally included Paper Mario from Sticker Star, but at the same time, yeah, it was just a very bland experience. No original enemies or NPCs or characters, and Bowser as the main villain once again, but just this time with Paper Bowser, it, this just wasn't the Mario and Luigi series that we were used to. After the company had gone bankrupt after their two remakes in 2017 and 2018, it didn't look like there was a shot that we would see Mario and Luigi at least anytime soon. In fact, it may be a chance that we never saw them ever again. Of course, during yesterday's Nintendo Direct, they just did the impossible. They brought back Mario and Luigi and it looks better than ever. And this is such a huge deal, not only because Mario and Luigi getting the revival it needs after nine long years without a brand new title, but also considering the fact that this will be the very first Mario and Luigi game since the Game Boy Advance title that actually gets a home console release. This gets a full-fledged home console release on Nintendo Switch, which just feels like a dream, with a brand new art style that looks amazing on Switch. I really don't know how some people think it doesn't look that good. Not only is Mario & Luigi back, but it's back with a brand new game, and this brand new game has original characters, locations, and a brand new original story which just makes me tingle all over my body with excitement. The craziest part about all of this is this all literally happened within the span of a year. We got four Mario RPGs in the span of just over a year, if you include Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope. This is just crazy. 
I mean, back to back to back, Nintendo brings back all three of their classic Mario RPG series with Mario RPG, Paper Mario, and Mario & Luigi. All on Nintendo Switch? This cannot be real life. I honestly don't think there's anything I could ever ask for Nintendo again. I mean, I literally love 3D Mario, and of course seeing a new 3D Mario or the next Zelda is always going to be exciting, but this as a long-term Nintendo fan, since a little boy, is something that I never thought I would see, let alone in the span of a year on one console. Oh please, I've said this with every game that's released so far. I've said this with Mario RPG Remake. I've said this with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake. And I'm gonna say it with Mario and Luigi Brothership. Buy this game. Please, show support and buy this game. Let Nintendo know that we love our Mario RPGs and we love them the way that they are. Unique, original, with original characters and bosses and worlds and story. This is what we have been asking for, but we now have to do our part. Nintendo finally did theirs. We have to show Nintendo that we love these games. And even if you've never played them before, please give them a chance. And maybe you're not big into RPGs because I never was. And it actually took me through the Mario RPGs to get more along the lines of playing other ones as well. And let me tell you this, if maybe you didn't have a lot of fun with the original Mario RPG, maybe the Thousand Year Door still just wasn't your speed. It was a little slow for you. At least do yourself a favor and give Mario & Luigi a chance. Mario & Luigi is a different style of RPG than any of the others. This one actually takes action amongst its RPG elements, and you actually have full control over everything that happens to you in this game. You have to physically jump and use your hammer to block attacks and dodge attacks and button time presses. I promise you as you're playing this game, you're going to forget that it's an RPG, and it has some of the best battling mechanics I have ever played in an RPG in my life, and it literally has some of the most unique and fun boss battles ever as well. So please, if you're still on the fence about this, Give it a try and see what you think. I guarantee you'll get hooked. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm just a happy kid right now in my mind, just hearkening back to my childhood of some of these RPGs, and I cannot believe we have them all. The trio, and even now, the quadruple is here because of Mario Rabbids, but we have them all. Mario RPG is on Switch in every way, every shape, and every fashion. Truly not had this many reactions and cried to any direct in my life than the last couple because of what Nintendo has done. So, I'll leave you with these. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! No! My heart. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, serious, I'm... Why am I... Oh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I can die happy. I can die happy. I'm good. I'm... Paper Mario is back, baby. It's Mario Luigi's! <laughs> I can't feel my nipples. I, I'm not lying to y'all, chat. I can't. I'm gonna cry again. There's no way I'm gonna cry twice this year. Get it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bro. Oh, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Mario Luigi isn't dead. I can't. I can't focus, man. I'm shaking. Home console Mario Luigi game. The characters, look at the enemies and everything, it's not generic. <laughs> oh, Nintendo. I'm 